Good evening, friends. Stephen Benoon here with Israeli News Live. And this evening, we are uh, joined by a very special uh, uh, guest and friend. Uh, I'll just say Shelly was the name that we're going to be using for this broadcast this evening. And Shelly had sent me a little while back, uh, earlier this year, actually, when I was traveling uh, through New Mexico for some of the meetings that I was doing there, it's so about the time I was getting some photographs from her, which we'll be sharing here on the screen with you, of unidentified flying objects there in Southern California descending onto a mountain. And if you look at the photos here, they're just amazing. It's almost like a ball of fire. And, uh, and you know, then, of course, I was able to... Because uh, because of the fact that at the time I was in uh, Dulce, New Mexico, I was already with uh, someone from Washington that's part of the secret space program that was able to confirm that what uh, was in these photographs is real, and uh, it is near a base there uh, that is known for alien activity because they work with our military. Uh, and Shelly shared with us very, very interesting uh, story that happened to her uh, where she lives at there. And we wanted her to come on to share with you tonight uh, about that, that story and about these pictures and the things that she's experienced. So Shelly, thank you for joining us here tonight on Israeli News Live. Of course. Thank you for having me. So give us a little background. I mean, you're, you're there in Southern California. We don't want to say necessarily where, uh, but you are in Southern California and you are near, definitely, as uh, people can see by the photographs here, near a hotbed of activity. And uh, so what happened and how did you end up in this part of the country? Well, I've always lived here in Southern California. So about... <laughs> About four years ago, I just, I live in, a, in an area that does not have a lot of light pollution. And I started noticing things in the sky and I thought, well, this is strange. And I've seen a lot of things, which I don't probably, I didn't know at the time was, you know, our military. Um, and then I started being able to get, I could tell the difference between our military and something that wasn't quite our military at all something more extraterrestrial. And um, I had seen a round craft and it had windows, the shape. The only way I can describe it is, is uh, the walls of Peru, how they're kind of squared, but they're different shapes, but they're next to each other. And the windows went all the way, way around the craft on the top and underneath. And this, this rainbow light came from it. Um, I also, um, I, I kind of jumped ahead. I had, I had, been, I had seen some things and I started sharing with one of my neighbors and she started seeing the same thing. And so we're talking back and forth. And next thing you know, a military drone shows up. And I knew that was a warning to me that I need to stop talking and sharing about this stuff. And then my, soon after my new Apple phone crashed. So I knew that that was all, they didn't want me discussing any of this stuff. But um, probably within maybe three weeks, I was sleeping in bed about 4.30 in the morning. And all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit in me just, I gasped, like something's wrong. I need to get up and pray right now. And I got up and I thought, well, before I pray, I'm going to go look out the window because something's not right. And I looked out the window and what did I see? I saw a round craft right above my house. And this was only maybe three weeks after that drone showed up. Now, and that the round craft was alien or actually uh, military. To be honest with you, because the Holy Spirit woke me up. I, I really still to this day don't know. But the fact that the Holy Spirit woke me up, it kind of makes me wonder that it was not military, but I really honestly do not know. And I think you have a picture of that round craft that I mailed you. 
Yes. Um, yes. And um, and then fast forward, I'm watching all the stuff that goes on for probably four years or more now. And it was August of 2021. And I, I'm familiar with all the stuff, activity that's going on, but it was about, it was a Sunday and it was probably about four o'clock in the afternoon. And I saw a light on top of this mountain, which is not normal. Usually I see different things. And I, so I hurried up and I looked and what I saw was very shocking. And it was around, it was, I don't know how to explain it. It was a round pulsating light. And as I watched two light beings, I don't know how to say it. They were in the shape of a human, but they were all light. And two came out, one went to the right, one went to the left and they started bending down. I don't know if they were putting something down or picking something up. I don't know. But when they left this round light, the light stopped pulsating a rainbow color. And, and then when they came back to this round light, it start every time they come back to it, it would pulsate rainbow color. And um, this happened three times. And I was so shocked. I even told my husband, I said, look, look, he goes, I don't want to look. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. I don't want to look. But when you talk about the craft that they came in, can you give, would you have an estimation about how big you, or something you well, can compare that's it to? That's what I don't size? know. I don't know that it was a craft or a portal. I really don't know. Okay. I just, um, because it never went up and it never came down. It just stayed positioned. And I watched it with, you know, with my high powered, you know, visual, um, you know, binoculars or whatever. Right. And, and it just kind of disappeared. Wow. So I really don't know what it was and I don't know what I'm seeing. I, I'm only describing what I've seen. And I told myself, I said, I will not tell anybody about this because people were, are, they're not, they're not going to understand. They don't see what I just saw. And I said, but you know what, Lord, if you can have somebody else see what I saw, then I will share it with people. And not that long after, some months later, uh, Cyrus Parsa came on your show. And he started sharing the exact thing that I saw. And I said, okay, Lord, you just confirmed it to me. And so then I started sharing because, you know, there's a lot going on that a lot of people don't see. And I luckily have a view. I'm very high up on a hill. So I have a, a higher view of everything where my eye level is right at the mountain. Wow. So I can see things. So um, one year goes by and it was July 2nd of this year and we were driving home and I was only a couple blocks away. And I noticed my husband said, he goes, oh, your light's back. Oh, my and gosh. So he got to see it this time around. Yeah. Well, he saw it last time, but he didn't want to look in the, through the <laughs> telescope light. He, he didn't want to know. <laughs> yes. But, but he said, your light's back. And I'm like, what? And so I hurried home. And the only thing I saw was, um, and the, there again, I sent you pictures of it. It was round shaped. And then the shape changed. It changed uh, a few times. And then it just disappeared. Wow. You and know, this is in the, one, and just, just to let you know, it's exact location. It was last year. So the same location I saw last year of the two light beings come out is the exact location that I saw this year, July 2nd. But one more thing I forgot to tell you when I saw those light beings come out last year, um, within two weeks, our military showed up there at that exact spot. And I know this because I've been watching everything for years. I know the difference. You know, it kind of reminds me of LED light versus a rainbow light, bright light. It's, it's a different kind of lighting. 
Two, th two things, Shelly, let me ask you, uh, or one, one thing I want to share with you. I'm going to talk to Cyrus and see if we maybe can't even possibly do another interview and have you guys together uh, mm -hmm. if that's something you would be interested in. Oh, uh, I'd love it. And yeah. I even I even went and got his book. And um, I was hoping he would talk about it in there, but he didn't. So I was hoping he'd come out with another book that shares more of that. There you go. There you go. Now, the light beings. Now, is this the picture where we see the light craft coming down on the mountain? Is that correct there? Well, if it's in the middle of the mountain, that's yes. our military. Okay. All but right. if it's on top of the mountain, that is not our military. Right. I gotcha. Okay. Now, secondly, do the light beings take on any type of form themselves that you can tell when you're looking at them through your scope? It kind of reminds me almost like a uh, shape of a human being, but okay. it's all like a bright light, almost like a sunlight, but not that bright. I mean, you can actually look, look, see it. Exactly. And of course, we're able to zoom in on the picture as well to give you a little bit better idea, but I'm sure there's the picture will not do the justification like what you could probably see with your with your scope when you're looking at this. And, and it's right. just fascinating to me. What, one thing that that is stuck in my mind, Shelly, since we spoke uh, by phone initially was when our military and the only reason I know it's our military, because after I conveyed your story to some people I know in the secret space program, uh, they shared with me that that was our own technology coming down in this drone that was scanning you scanning your home and it was of course a message to kind of back off just like everything that you told me that you felt like but if you could take us back and re-describe what happened because I have to tell you in my own mind when you were telling me this I was visualizing step by step every word you said and just imagining what this must have been like, what you went through. And even though this is not uh, extraterrestrial, it just goes to show how far along our government is. As I've been told yeah. years past, what anybody well, could imagine. Remember in the beginning, I told you that my friend and I, we would text each other of what we're seeing coming in and out of the mountain. And so I had already got a telescope. She came over. And then later on, she decided, I'm going to get a telescope. So she went and got one. And she goes, can you come over and help me set it up? And it was nighttime. And I helped her set it up. And when I looked through it, I was shocked. Because straight above our heads were two round crafts that were um, our military. And I, I, they had pulsating lights. So they were trying to replicate that rainbow light but it's not the same. It kind of, if I, if I may, it kind of reminded me of um, that game, that, that memory game where you push the lights and you try to oh, memorize. Yes. yes. Uh, what do they call it? Simon. 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 Yes. Yes. It kind of reminded me like that in the sky, but they could change color, any color they want and different layers. Like they, in the middle, they could put white, they could put black, they could put rainbow, they could put anything. And, and then on the outer circle, they can put another light. And all of us saw this and we were all shocked. Um, and then after that, you know, I'm texting her back and forth. And then that thing happened. It was actually the day that it happened to me. It was Christmas Eve uh, morning at 4.30 in the morning. Wow. And yeah. And I just woke up in, um, it, I was sound, I was sound asleep and I just woke up like, <gasps> and I knew that I had to get up and pray. But here's the interesting thing. When I got up and I looked out the window, I saw it and I walked back to grab my camera and to take a picture of it. And I noticed they changed some lights off of it. And but I did get the picture and that's the one I sent you. And I decided not to wake anybody up in the house. 
And I just came over and I just started praying and praying. And shortly later, the, the Lord showed me, he says, anything in the skies above, you pray and I will take care of it. And I said, well, that's just what I did. So I'm glad, you know, I felt the Holy Spirit leading me just to go straight into prayer about it because he controls the sky. Yes. Amen. Amen. Uh, that is a very important thing that I believe that listeners need to be aware of. And that is that prayer is vital, especially when we're dealing with things of this magnitude of, uh, and of this nature. Uh, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm reminded and, and, and I get this, I get this reminder directly from a friend of mine in Washington, D.C. that literally works at the White House and says to me, you know, Steve, the scripture says in the book of Luke, uh, you know, as you got somebody from the White House quoting the book of Luke to you, fearful sights are coming upon the earth that's going to cause man's hearts to fail for fear. Now, that's not necessarily what you're seeing here, but nonetheless, it lets you know that there is some scary things going on, whether it's our own government or whether it's uh, alien technology or, or any other kind of strange events that are happening. We got some pretty crazy things that are going on out there. And you mentioned to the triangular craft, which I know are ours. We have 20 of those. I've mentioned that before to people. And uh, in fact, when I was sp speaking to you, I went to Texas after I left uh, Dulce, New Mexico. I actually went to Arizona, then down to Texas. And over Texas, San Antonio, Texas, I actually was able to witness our own triangular craft. Had no idea it was going to be there, uh, but I actually got a visual on one there. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about what you've seen as far as the triangular craft? Well, I'll tell you one thing. Um, during this years of watching and observing, um, they, I see them out during the day as well, but it's almost like these crafts can take on whatever, if there's clouds above them, they can mirror that cloud below the craft. So you can't tell if it's cloud or, or even sky, but it does have like a corner to it, like a, like a triangle to it. And I've mm -hmm. seen them multiple, multiple times. And, um, but I've seen something different recently and I've now caught on to it because like I said when I every window in my house has a view every window and so I can watch just not even meaning to watch I can see things you know I could just be walking from my family room to my kitchen and see things well I noticed something peculiar lately is the clouds if you happen to glance at them and you see like a little diamond spark they're in there that spark is them yes. during, during the day. Wow. And nice. it'll, it'll, and you'll kind of go, wait, what D did I just see a spark or no, that's just a cloud. You know, it happens so quick that you wouldn't even know that they're there. And, and that is true. I know that of course, what I use is night vision uh, because night vision does cause the craft, even though it has that, as you said, it's got this kind of a, almost like a mirror effect to where it, but, but it's not mirroring the ground in this case here. It's basically turning into whatever it's, it's surrounded by, but the night vision allows you to see it regardless. Uh, even regular UFO aircraft, you take down the night vision you don't see that thing streaking across the sky, but yet if you put the night vision up, you do. And one thing that I was told, like when we were in Dulce, we were looking at the UFOs and we seen nine that night, nine UFOs, including one that my wife got to witness actually went to the moon itself. Uh, and I've had people say, cause I actually published one video that I'd, I caught when I was here in Tennessee uh, and people were saying, Steve, that's a satellite. And they were actually right. I did get it confirmed. It was a satellite that I was uh, viewing there, but it was slow moving. Whereas the UFOs, when they're flying, at least in the night vision there, they're traveling at such a tre tremendous speed that literally they go right across the entire uh, view of the sky, however many miles that may be. I think like 120 miles of sky that you can see uh, in a matter of seconds. Uh, it's just unbelievable how fast they are. 
Yeah. Uh, but but uh, what else can you share with us about what you've experienced there? Well, for one, what I've noticed um, that our military doesn't have that speed and that agility that the real UFOs have. I know That's that. True. That's true. And um, at first, in the beginning, when I I was such a novice, I didn't really, I was just kind of learning. I didn't know anything about space first or anything like that. And um, so when I, that drone showed up, I thought it was just a neighbor who was looking into my barn where, you know, cause I have farm animals and I thought, well, that's rude. How dare they look into my barn? And I walked out and I'm like, get out of here. And I'm yelling at them to get out of here and get off my property. And then it flew over my house. So I, I ran into through my house to get to the front and I watched them scan my license plate. And I still didn't get it. I'm still thinking it's a neighbor. And I ran out there and I'm screaming at it. And the sun was in my way. It was around lunchtime. And I had had my hand up like this because the sun was bothering my eyes. And um, they, they came down in front of my face, probably about three and a half feet, just far enough where wow. I couldn't. And I went to reach for it and it went straight up in the air. And when I moved my hand away, it came down a second time and scanned my face. So if it didn't get it right the first time, they did it the second time. And... I was so angry that I still didn't understand. And there was two cameras on it and it was military green, but I was so caught up in getting mad. How dare they? And I walked into the house and I was going to get the shotgun. And then the Holy spirit talked to me and says, that is military. And I went, Oh, wow. Okay. So I just didn't go out again. And then it took off. But, you know, the Holy Spirit lets me know a lot of things and, tell you know, shares things in ways that I don't know how to explain. See, we are in Southern California and it, kind of the desert area and we get a lot of rattlesnakes. And there have been quite a few times where I during the day could just be wrapping up my hose and the Lord will say, stop in my mind. He'll say, stop. And I'm like, stop. Why am I stopping? I'm just winding up the hose. And I look and I realize I'm reeling in a rattlesnake closer oh to goodness. every time I'm. Yeah. So there's been times where the Lord would, you know, tell me something or share something with me. And um, it just, that's how I ended up on this property. I was a realtor at the time and um, I was showing the, this client who wanted to see this property and he said, the Lord said, this will be yours. And I'm like, well, okay. And the guy says, okay, we'll buy it. And then halfway um, during escrow, he says, hey, I changed my mind. And I had already told my husband that it's supposed to be ours. So he's like, okay. So we bought it 17, 18 years ago. <laughs> that, is that is amazing. Yeah. But it's so important that people learn to learn God's voice. Yes. And, and ask him to confirm it. Just keep practicing and talking with him and sharing. And just when you hear a thought, ask him, is this your thought, Lord? Is this yes. or is it or is it me? And it took me to figure out who I am first to be able to notice the dip. Oh, wait, that's my thought, because I know how I think. Right, right. You but know, it's he, interesting that you say that, too. But like the case of the rattlesnake and coming up on the hose, because you know, I've experienced over the years, and I have to say over the years, it's not frequent, but uh, similar type things. And I think it's so important, uh, Sister Shelley, that you're sharing this with the people tonight as well, because I remember one time, just a simple little thing. Uh, I was very poor, very young man at the time in my early 20s. And uh, the starter had gone out on my car and I'm, I'm trying to figure out a way. Okay. I got to walk to the parts store to get a, get a, get a starter. Uh, my daughter was a little bitty girl at the time. So I took her stroller to carry it. Cause I didn't want to carry the starter that far. Right. I get inside the parts store waiting in line there to do it. And suddenly I hear a voice speak as plain as I'm talking to you. It said, they're stealing your stroller. And, and I'd had things like this happen before in life, you know, so it wasn't uncommon for that to happen to me, but I'm like, 
surely I just imagined that. But I knew I didn't, you know, and instead of going out to, to stop the crime from happening, because I let, I didn't want to, I was too embarrassed to bring the stroller inside the parts store. You know, I just left it sitting out there on the sidewalk. And so sure enough, I walk out, stroller's gone. <laughs> you, know? Yeah. Well, you know, I've had this stuff happen so often. And I had a similar thing like you. My husband wanted me to go pick up his medicine. And it was in a new Target shopping center. And there's nobody parked in the parking lot because it was new. It just, they just built this Target. And I'm thinking I'm by myself. And the Lord said, somebody's coming. I'm like, somebody's coming. I scanned the whole parking lot. I'm like, I don't see anybody. And sure enough, a homeless man came on a bike and skidded around. But one thing I've learned, whenever it does not quite make sense to me, it's probably the Lord. Yeah. And I, and just really quick, when we went through the financial hardship of 2007, eight, we were struggling. And um, I went to get a fire cake for my son, you know, with the truck on it, and some sandwiches, and I couldn't afford I could barely afford both. And I had to pay, and I asked him, can I pay for it now? So I don't go through that money. And they said, No, you have to pick it up in two weeks. And I ended up having to use it for milk and I think just a few gallons of gas. And when the day the party and everybody was supposed to come, I didn't have enough money. And I said, ask my husband, do you have the money? And he says, no. And I said, well, I only have half the money. What am I going to do? And, you know, he's kind of a smart aleck. And he goes, well, I guess you're just going to have to uh, pay with your looks. Ha, ha, ha you know, like a joke. <laughs> and right when he says that, the Lord spoke to me and he said, you'll have both. And I looked at my husband square in the eyes and I said, the Lord said, I'll have both. And he goes, good luck with that. And I remember driving to the store confident that I know the Lord told me this. And yeah. I got to the grocery store and I'm looking around thinking, okay, I'm nervous. I don't, you know, I'm looking around for money. I'm looking to see if anybody's going to pay there's nobody but out of faith I put out both receipts one for the cake one for the sandwiches knowing I can only pay for half and that lady looked at me she goes oh my gosh I'm so sorry she goes I remember this cake with the fire truck and we real I realized we made it for the wrong day I'm going to make it for you right now and it's free amen so I only had to pay for half but <laughs> But did it make sense? Me driving to the store, it made no sense how God was going to figure it out. But he does every mm -hmm. time. And if we could just trust him, when it doesn't make sense to us, it's probably him. That's exactly right. What a beautiful testimony. Mm -hmm. Oh, gosh. Shelly, I appreciate so much you sharing these things with us tonight. And uh, if there's anything else you would like to add in conclusion, but I would like to have you back on. Like I said, I, I'm going to reach out to, uh, to Cyrus and see if possibly we couldn't do a three-way interview together. Uh, yeah, that would be amazing. Yeah, even if we're just going back, sharing some of the same things about the light beings once again, and to get his input on it as well. I think it is a blessing for people uh, to know these things. And, uh, and, and, and at the same time, uh, I'll share this interview uh, with the people I know in Washington to get some of their input on it, because they will actually talk about which particular, uh, in, in this case here, more than likely, they will know what, uh, as we would say, species of alien that you've actually witnessed. Yeah. Uh, and that would be of an interest as well. So uh, let's do that if that works for you. And uh, at the sure. same time, let me let you have the floor in closing. What else you might would like to share with people that are listening tonight? Well, I think the most important thing is that you do not fear because fear yeah. adds, it, the enemy can take advantage of that. Yes. And so you just need to trust in your, in the Lord and just focus on him and know that he's going to protect you no matter what. Look at all the times in the Bible he protected people. And so you just have to keep your eyes and focus on him and make sure you're doing what you're supposed to be doing and just loving on him. 
Amen. Amen. I couldn't agree more. I couldn't, it could not, no better way uh, express that I can see. And uh, we really appreciate having you on tonight. And uh, I want to thank you guys that are listening and share the video uh, far and wide that you can with anybody that you feel like it'll be a blessing to them. And, uh, and, and, and if you happen to, let's say maybe you've had a similar type of experience, something like that. I, I don't normally uh, even speak about it like this here, but if you'd like to share your story with us, please take the time, write to us israelinewslive at gmail.com, but, but put in the description, because believe me, the emails I get is completely overwhelming. There's no way I could ever even begin to think about reading them all. But if you could just put in there, uh, maybe um, uh, experience, that would probably be a good thing for the subject line for me. And that way I'll look specifically for that and we can read your letters there, and maybe we could share another testimony like this with our viewers there. So again, thank you, Shelly, for taking the thank, time out. Thank you so much, Steve. I appreciate all the hard work you do. Thank you. God bless you, sister, and God bless those of you listening tonight.